Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me, let's play some more Dota, or rather watch Dota in this case, we're gonna watch another replay. I am playing All Random, which is, uh, again, one of my favorite gameplay modes, and I have chosen, I believe this is All Random, maybe it was a uh, single draft, I can't recall, but I have chosen Rubik, which is one of my favorite heroes, simply because he is, he, he's just so fun, he's just so much fun. Um... So let's wait till our blue player joins the game, and then we'll go through the player lineup. Or not the player, but the, the hero lineup. Speed the game up just a little bit while we wait. I guess we can start with their side. Alright. So here's here we go. We got Juggernaut. We got Anti-Mage. Goblin Techies. Nyx Assassin. Jakiro. We got Rubik. Luna. Uh, Legion Commander. Silencer. And Medusa. So... Just, just kind of looking over their team lineup. Obviously, the uh, the anti mage and the juggernaut would be their their farms, their carries, mains as you could call them. You've got support Jakiro, support Techies. Um, Techies is going to be an annoying, annoying hero to have to deal with. Um, then we've got this lineup over here. Um, I am definitely the support out of this lineup, unfortunately, which is good though because I can show you guys how to support. Hopefully, I do a good job with it. We got Luna. Um, Medusa are probably number one, number two. Probably in, in the order of uh, Medusa, followed by Luna. And then Silencer should really be doubling up as a support hero, support hero in this campaign, just because, um, well, I mean, there's only me. There, sh there should be, you should have two supports. I don't know why they put Anti-Mage mid, that's weird. They should have probably put Nyx Assassin mid, in my opinion. I think he would have done a lot better there. Although... <laughs> You know, they have a bit of a, a range issue. If it were me, I would have probably put Nyx Assassin mid, Jakiro with um, Denied. either Jug or Anti-Mage top. But, you know, whatever. Alright, so we're going to go to uh, player perspective now. And uh, make sure we have me selected. And, uh, you know what? Let's actually watch this first engagement a little bit closer because uh, we seem to have missed most of it. So we are going with something called a tri-lane, although we do have a jungler. A, a pure tri-lane would be all three heroes in the lane. You get much reduced experience, but with certain hero combinations, you can actually get a lot of kills. And if you get the kills, then you pretty much guarantee... And look at this, we are going to be... Oh. oh, it's like two hits away. Um, if you get a lot of kills, then it's, it justifies the tri-lane. It also shuts down their heroes completely, so it's, it's a trade-off. Um, but we do have the jungler, who's going to just participate in some fights. I Honestly, I hate Legion Commander jungle, by the way. Um, I think that it's, it's one of the slowest jungling heroes that there is, and it's just a bad idea, but... Hey, I'm just the lowly support. No one wanted to listen to me. So, that's fine. Now, while, while we were in spectator mode, we saw that Jakiro did do a ward in the top room position, or sorry, in the, to, to, to ward the top, the bottom, <laughs> jeez, the bottom rune, it's got a, a ward right there. I have purchased some runes, <laughs> can't talk today, I have purchased some wards, they're in the inventory of the uh, stash, going for the two minute rune, I think it's a regeneration rune, I don't need it, so I ping for it and just say, hey, there's the one there, um, probably should let the Legion Commander take it, since Legion Commander is already almost dead because Legion Commander Jungle is Horabad. Nice. Luna gets a kill. We're gonna go through the skills in just a moment, but look at this. Oh, it's beautiful! A Roomba the support gives two kills to the carry. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about our, her our hero's skills. So we have a spell called Telekinesis. Rubik uses his telekinetic powers to lift the enemy into the ground, or into the air, briefly, and then hurl them back at the ground. The unit lands on the ground with such force that it stuns nearby enemies. So this is a combination spell. First off, it, it's essentially a, a stun. It's a 1.5 at this level. Second, stun, because you're going to lift the hero in the air, and unless they're magic immune, they can't do anything. So it's a stun. Okay? But then, when they land, they stun everything around them for a shorter duration. Okay, we noticed that he was coming in because I placed that ward, so we're pinging, pinging. Hey, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a Nyx over here. Let's get him. Let's get him, let's get him, let's get him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And he misses his stun. I'm going to throw him back. You can control the direction, usually about that big of an AoE. Throw him back so that he's out of position. Shakiro's going to just probably make it away from here. 
Unless he decides to go that way for some reason. Okay. Don't know why he turned around there. Uh, we didn't have boots. Neither of us had boots. Um, that was strange. I think he probably could have made it if he kept going that way. But anyway, so we've got telekinesis, right? Which is a, it's a positional skill. If you can pull someone out of position, um, or just use it in a team fight, you can do a, an AoE stun, which is pretty good. We've got Fade Bolt. Rubik creates a powerful stream of arcane energy that travels between enemy units dealing damage and reducing their attack damage. Each jump deals less damage. So every time it hits a target, it reduces the damage by 4%. It's not very, it's not a big deal. You don't really worry about, about that too much. Most importantly, what this does is it lowers hero damage by a flat amount. Notice at level 2 right now, it's reducing enemy damage by 20. So when you pair Rubik with Luna, the damage discrepancy between our side and their side is huge. It's just freaking huge. Because we have, they do 20 less damage during a team fight, and we do 22 more. So we have just massive base damage. She's doing like 80 something. Nyx Assassin is doing 57 minus 20 is 37. So we like team fight. We, we want to get them to come and play with us as often as possible. Next up we've got Null Field. Rubik's mastery of the arcane protects allied heroes against weaker magics, granting them magic resistance. I threw him toward the Nyx, trying to get a stun on him. Um, for some reason, Luna, I think, is going to turn around and... Oh, that was painful. Oh, that was bad. We're going to die. I'm dead. So he used Lucent Beam. Luna used her 150 damage Lucent Beam. And Nyx timed his spiked carapace perfectly, which reflected the damage. So she nuked herself for 150 damage. Which is why she died so damn quick. And got me killed. I blame her. It's all her fault. So I actually went for an energy booster first. And I'm going to be going for some arcane boots. I hate techies. I hate techies so much. And then most importantly, the most fun skill that we get to play with is called Spell Steal. Rubik studies the trace magical essence of one enemy hero, learning the secrets of the last spell the hero casts. Rubik can use this spell as his own for several minutes or until he dies. Now, something that's very important to, to know about spell steal is that unlike every, pretty much every other hero, spells that Rubik steals have zero cast point animation. What that means is, like, like take for example, um, let's see, who's got a really crappy cast point? I would say, well, even even you can even see it with Luna, right? Like when Luna casts a spell, it's a very quick ca quick cast. But notice how she's got to like she like takes her right arm and she like throws it down, and then when her arm hits the bottom of her throwing animation, then the target gets hit by Lucent Beam. That's called a cast animation. And the cast point delay or the cast point whatever is how long it takes from you initiating the command to cast the spell to the spell actually happening. So if we go back to what I was saying about Rubik, watch her. Okay, she's gonna cast it. Watch her. Watch her arm. She'll probably cast it. She's gonna turn. Watch her. Watch her. Watch her. Watch her. Watch her. Watch her arm. See how she had to throw her arm down? Do it one more time. Let's slow the game down too. It's kind of hard to measure the amount of time, but you can actually look it up in the files. But here she goes. Ready? And she casts a spell. That was the cast animation, right? So Rubik. As I was saying, when he spell steals, any spell that he takes, zero point cast animation. He can just cast things instantly. So it's really good for skills like Macro Pyre, which we're going to get to use taken from Jakiro. It's good for spells from like Tidehunter's Ultimate. Any 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 spell. I mean, it's just a huge advantage that he has over other heroes is that he can just instantly just throw out spells. I don't know why I did that. I just, I just thought I'd throw him in the air. It didn't really do anything. That Luna's gonna die so quick. Hey, but I get a kill. <laughs> I don't know why Luna suicided. He's like, oh, you threw him in the air. We've got to kill him. Get him. Get him. So, anyway, um, we can totally buy Arcane Boots. We're gonna do that. Arcane Boots is a very necessary item on Rubik because he, um, he just has tons of... He can use tons of mana. If you have quick fingers, you can steal lots of spells, and then you just need lots and lots of mana. So, yeah. Um, next up, we're going to probably get a magic stick, followed up with uh, who knows what. We'll see. So, 
The Null Field magic resistance applies to your own hero as well. So basically, Rubik reduces the incoming damage from the enemy team and then uses their own ultimates against them, is, is the goal. Now looking at their lineup, there's some pretty fun skills that we can try to steal. We can steal pretty much anything that Jakiro casts is good. He's only got three spells that can be stolen. You can't steal his passive. So it's either going to be Ice Path, which is an AoE stun. It's going to be Dual Breath, which is a huge AoE damage. Or it's going to be Macro Pyre, which is, again, huge AoE damage. Nyx Assassin, pretty much all useful skills. We got a, a, line, a line stun. We've got Spike Carapace, which is defensive. You can see there, I finally... Yay, I got to steal Dual Breath. Oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect example. Let's watch that. So you gotta watch watch these cast animations. This is so significant! It is, you really gotta understand the mechanics here. Okay, watch him cast it. See how he's gotta like, throw his heads back? And then he casts it. Now watch when I st I'm gonna cast it back at him. Ready? I turn around, and I just go... Blah! He has an animation, but the animation happens after he starts casting. Just trust me. Just trust me. It's right. So anyway, I stole this thing. It's only level 2, but um, it's good. It's good. So Spike Carapace would give us defenses, Mana Burn would be good, Vendetta would be awesome, Goblin Techies, pretty much anything he casts would be good, although Suicide would be... It'd be very difficult to spell steal Suicide, because you'd have to do that after he suicides, but before he casts anything else. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll take that, thank you. Throw down a macro fire of my own. I'm probably gonna die here. Oh, that was not good. Kill him, kill him, kill him, get him, get him! Yes! As long as Luna gets kills, that's all that really matters. Anti-Mage, another good spell. Uh, another good hero to cast spell steal on, because you either get his ultimate, which is okay, um, or you get his blink skill, which is very, very good. Five second cooldown blink on Rubik, awesome. It's really fun, because you can get into these like little blinking contests with the Anti-Mage, where he's either chasing you and you're running away, or you're chasing him and he's running away, and it's, they're both blinking everywhere. It's kind of fun. And then Juggernaut, um, they're all good spells as well. You've got, you've got his AoE, um, Magic Immune Spin Move, you've got his Healing Ward, and you've got Omni Slash. So, we want to spell steal constantly. Um, ideally we want, we want to choose which skill by, by being reactionary. Very nice. Be nice if somebody had TP'd in, we could have killed him. But I didn't have a TP. I am wandering around doing my job as a warder. I'm warding the, the runes. I'm the only one buying wards. Which is kind of to be expected, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to complain about it. Somebody else should be in the slain. They should not be letting me have the farm, but I'll take the farm. Oh, yep. It's my dual breath. Throw it right back at you. Of course, he took probably... I took probably more damage than he did. I don't have very much life. chikiro has got a pretty good health health pool right now. About a thousand to my 700. So I picked up a Ring of Regeneration. And I think at this point what I was thinking is, um, yeah, maybe I'll build a a Force Staff so that I can push people out of stuns, push people away from Juggernaut's spin, maybe push people away from Nyx Assassin's opening stun. Oh hey there, Chikiro. How's, how's it going? Watch that instant cast. Ready? Boom boom. Take the macro pyre. Marumba, you suck. Why didn't you take macro pyre? I could have had macro pyre. Although macro pyre is pretty expensive mana wise. Although it would work really well in conjunction with telekinesis. So I'm, uh, you know, giving mana to my my carry, just kind of supporting him, making sure he doesn't die. So far, she is three and four, despite the fact that she's been supported by this magnificent uh, Rubik. I don't know why she's dying so often. She's a bit suicidal, I think. Dyer's bottom tower has yep, fallen. you can see here I'm thinking I'm thinking four staff. Um, seems like that might be good, but at the very least, just having the Ring of Regeneration kind of offsets the amount of damage we're taking from Jakiro. So yeah, still got an extra ward. Trying to decide where we should put that. Speed the game up just a little bit while we're wandering around the map. So I'm trying to think, like, can we can we set up a gank anywhere? I'm checking ward duration, that one's about to expire. Maybe I'll just go ward the top. I'm leeching experience while blue feeds from the top creep spot, but I'm not killing anything because that would push the wave. Now that he's there, I'll leave the ward the, the lane alone. I'm thinking team fight, team fight. I need to get up there. Let's go, let's go! Get up there! Oh, Nyx Assassin. 
Oh, it's so bad. We're all dying. Dual breath. Spell steal. Ooh. I got remote mines. <laughs> Yay, I got Goblin Techie's ultimate. Let's put down some mines. Now, when you steal a spell that actually has like a secondary spell, like Focus Detonate, you get that one as well. So we have remote mines. We can lay landmines just like we're Goblin Techies. So I immediately go back to well, buy two teleport scrolls, get my mana up, and let's go put some mines down. This could be good. What I'm doing now, remember a second ago I said I didn't want to push the wave because I wanted blue to be able to farm it. In this case, I'm trying to push the wave because I want the wave to be out of the way so that I can either plant ward, uh, plant ward, remote mines, or, or do something. But no, actually, I think I decide, okay, the most likely lane that they're going to push is the top lane, so let's, let's throw down some remotes. And instead of going for the four staff, because of, actually, just because I stole remote mines, I ended up making a soul ring. It's like I've turned into a techies. And I'm going to do the most boring thing ever, which is stand in one place for a minute or two, just laying down mines. Just basically what Goblin Techies does all game long. How many is that? Got quite a few mines there. And I come in just in time to secure the duel and steal the kill. And Luna manages to die again. I've got two new wards as well. Looks like we're going to try to push this tower down. Goblin Techies had one mine. Too bad he didn't have two. He could have killed that, that uh, Legion Commander pretty easily. Alright, time to get out of here, I think. So at this point, I've, I've changed it up and I've decided to go for a Bloodstone, which... It's questionable, you know, in hindsight, I love Bloodstone on Rubik simply because you almost have infinite mana, and uh, he's a team fighter, so he wants to be in all kinds of fights. You know, the thing is that you can get enough mana from like a, a Yule Scepter or from, from almost any other item. You don't need to use Bloodstone. But he's the type of hero that I like to, to go for the Bloodstone on, and then after Bloodstone you get Scepter, and if you build the Scepter, then he has two seconds on his spell steal cooldown. So you can't really go scepter first because then then you you have no mana. So I usually go bloodstone first and then scepter and then you have tons of life and you can spell steal like crazy and you know I don't know. It it it'd probably be better to go for Yule's scepter. We'd have more movement speed, same mana regen. We wouldn't have quite as much HP regen, but eh, it's going to work out. We'll see. I think we'll be okay with a, a bloodstone. Okay, I used my Soul Ring because I'm planning on using a, a Blast here on the Fade Bolt. You get the mana for 10 seconds. And that's something I haven't actually talked about this item. I don't think we have. Sacrifice consumes 150 HP temporarily uh, to temporarily gain 150 mana. Last 10 seconds. So the thing is that you gain HP so quickly from the Soul Ring. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. What am I doing here? Why am I still out here? I'm dying. That's what I'm doing. I'm dying. Anyway, um, Soul Ring is great because it has a, a 30 second cooldown, and in those 30 seconds it's going to cause you to regenerate like about 100 life. Paired with your base regeneration, you pretty much gain all the mana back, all the life back. So it just gives you free mana. Although you don't want to use it in combat unless you really know what you're doing because it will also lower your life in the short term. Well, being dead is no fun, so speed it up. Juggernaut being a juggernaut. And I don't get to play in this fight, but I'm coming up late. I'm back, I'm back, I'm coming. I'm here. What I steal? What I steal? Ice path, okay? Throw it out there. What are you doing, Techies? What are you doing? You trying to suicide? Nope. Nope. I don't really know what that Techies was doing. So unfortunately, it's a level 2 ice path. But, hey, a stun is a stun. We'll take it. Let's see if we can push this tower down. We did get the point Dyer's booster, so what the plan is, is we buy the vitality booster, we disassemble the arcane boots, buy the bloodstone recipe, and then that way we can kind of get this a little bit quicker. Attack. 
We'll lose the AoE mana for the team, but we'll get the Bloodstone a little bit faster. Save him. Oh, what a save. And I stole... <laughs> you see me spinning now? <laughs> I love Rubik. He's so much fun. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. Pick him up. I picked him up, but no one saw it because he was out of line of sight. I love it. It's just so funny, you know? Especially if they have really big spells. Black Hole, Tidehunter's Ultimate, like, big visual spells. It's fun to steal those. They make for some very good, uh, highlights of the week over at Dota Cinema. So, let's see. We're, we're well on our way. We only need a little bit more money. I've just decided to buy a Sentry Ward because I'm thinking that there's gonna probably be some... some mines here. And actually, why don't we, uh, let's pause it, and let's look at the game from Techie's perspective. Let's see what he's been up to. He's got one remote right up against the mine, or right up against the tower, and player perspective, uh, free camera. Let's see, I don't know where else he has, uh... Free camera, hello. It's not letting me move it. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna go back to player perspective then. But anyway, he doesn't have very many mines, which is, uh, kind of surprising. I would have expected a lot more. I've still got Blade Fury. I just stole his stun, but then missed. Awesome. If we just focus him down, we can probably kill him. Attack him, hit him, kill him. Very good. Hey look, it's a Techies. He just suicided. <laughs> oh jeez, so Silence just got 16 stolen int. I imagine that Techies doesn't have very much mana. Considering uh, how many times he's died. Only four times. I guess it's not that bad, but... Okay, so we have 900 gold, and I bought the Sentry Wards. Just gonna do a little bit of farming, see if we can fit this, finish this Bloodstone. I still have these mines up top lane, and unfortunately I picked wrong. They, they haven't pushed it at all. I think I put like five or six of them up there. It's a lot. It's like 1800 magic damage. If they just push the top lane, I could wipe them. But no, they don't want to push because they're jerks. So sentries are important for the techies and for Nyx Assassin. Fade Bolt, unlike most other spells, has an infinite bounce. It can only hit one target each time, like one, like it can only hit a target one time in one cast, no matter how many times it bounces, but the point is that it can bounce literally forever. If you have infinite units, it'll target infinite units. Alright, you should be using your ultimate, in my opinion. I don't know why she didn't. Alright, I stole the wrong spell. We don't want mana void, we want blink. We need to blink. No, I needed blink, I needed blink. Oh god, it's so painful. Had I gotten blink instead of mana void, it would have been easy to get away. And for some reason, Juggernaut has a gem. Okay. I don't know if we bought that and then they stole it from us, or if... Maybe he just wanted it for some reason? We don't have any heroes with invisibility. So I don't know what they would be trying to detect. Alright, is there going to be a team fight? Because if there is, I'm ready to blink in. Put me in, boss. Or ready, ready to teleport in. Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's just walk then. Still got one sentry in the stash. And I'm going to teleport bottom to protect it. Maybe we'll even get enough money to finish our bloodstone. I am I am so greedily looking at this. I only need a hundred and some gold to finish my bloodstone. I need it. And it looks like they were doing Roshan. Thought I saw a dark green going there. No, he's not. Okay. I was wrong. But now pink's going in there. What are you doing, Pink? 
So we see him. I'm trying to decide what to do. Bloodstone recipes on in the inventory. Transferring it to the courier. Trying to. Answer to the courier. Answer to the courier. There we go. Alright. What do we got? So, so far I am 6 and 4. Overall, we're up by 3 kills. We've pushed their T2 mid. We've got a tower advantage easily. We pushed down 1, 2, 3, 4 towers. They've only pushed down 1. So we should have a pretty good gold advantage. Yes, we do. 5,000 gold ahead. 2,500 experience. I would say that they probably have a better late game team. Maybe? maybe? I don't know. Medusa Luna? Pretty good. But then again, Anti-Mage Juggernaut? Pretty good. I would say overall, t I think Tech Abilities is more of a liability. I do not think Techies is a good hero. I mean, he's fun, he's gimmicky, but he is, I just don't like him. I stole his blink. So now I have the ability to blink telekinesis. Which is pretty good. Found you. Come here. Oh, I didn't get the telekinesis who was on cooldown. Okay, well now I'm very mobile. At the current level of spell steal, it lasts for four minutes. So for four minutes, or until I want to cast spell steal again, I can blink. Which is pretty sweet. Also, because I have zero cast point animation, I am very quick at it. Very, very quick. I love the mobility. Alright, so I'm thinking, do I want to use Blink here to initiate? What are we going to do here? Purple's pretty far back already. I guess I'm not going not gonna to go for it. Also, we do have the Bloodstone and an extra two charges over what you start with. So every charge on a Bloodstone... Bloodstone does a couple things. First off, you can cast it. If you cast it, it pocket denies you. You can kill yourself. Useful for denying yourself if you cut yourself, if you're like in a really bad position or, or for whatever reason. Um, you're dead for just the same amount as if the enemy team kills you, but they get no gold. And it's just better to deny than it is to let them get this to the kill. Secondly, it gives you a big amount of HP and mana. I've stolen his Impale. Stunned him with it. Pretty long cooldown still on spell steal, so I can't take anything back. I lost blink, but that's okay. Up to 11 charges now. So you begin with 8 charges and gain a charge for every enemy that dies within 1675. It's a huge AUE. Each charge grants you 1 mana regeneration per second. This is a flat regain. This does not stack with things like 100% increased mana regeneration or anything. It's just a flat number that's added to your regeneration total. Um, each charge reduces the gold lost upon death by 25. So. If you have enough charges, you can completely protect your gold. And it also reduces respawn time by 4 seconds. If the bear dies, 500 plus 30 per charge is restored to all allies within 1650, sorry, 1675 radius, while you lose one third of your charges. Bloodstone is then placed where the, the uh, a blood mark is then placed where the bearer died, granting vision over 1800 radius, kind of like a ward, and allowing the bear to gain, gain nearby experience while dead. So... It does a lot of things, but the main thing is it gives you staying power. And basically, if you do well, it gives you infinite mana. And if they actually do get a kill on you, you come back to life like really quickly. So they can't just focus you down and, and knock you out for a minute or two. You'll be back if you're getting kills. Hey, look! I found a Juggernaut! <laughs> I stole his healing ward, so I cast it right away and just send it over to the Legion Commander. Ooh. It would have been nice to steal his Omni Slash. That was a pretty bad, pretty bad Luna ult, in my opinion. You don't want to cast Luna ult when they're running. You want to cast Luna ult when you're low on health, but not so low on health. She's she's playing Luna all wrong. Um, that Luna that we played against as Legion Commander did really well. The way she's playing is just stupid. Look at how low her HP is. I think has a thousand life. Remember how that Luna in the previous game built a, uh, a satanic... And she, I mean, she had a... Uh, by now, she... Or 31 minutes into the game, she had a Manta style. I mean, she had like 2,500 life. This one's just a glass cannon. Going for a Shadow Blade when we know that they have a gem. I don't... 
just it's just wrong. This is wrong. Don't play Luna this way. This is wrong. She's not a stealth hero. She doesn't need that. She needs b a BKB and I mean, it's just I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Anyway, um yeah, so you don't cast a spell when they're running away. You cast her ultimate when they're committing to killing you. And it makes it very very painful them for them to stay on you. This is a pretty good Medusa player. She knows how to use her ultimate. She doesn't use it as an initiation tool. She uses it defensively. You can use it offensively, but it's usually wrong. You usually want to use it just like Luna ult. You should use it when they're really committing hard to killing you, and it reverses the team fight. Because if they if they continue, they die. If they don't continue, they have to run, which they won't want to do if they're close to killing you. So it puts them in a really tough spot. But anyway. Now, I really wanted to build a Blink Dagger, but I ended up deciding, I guess, to make Boots of Travel. Boots of Travel is good, because if I get killed, then I can just teleport right back in to any unit, and uh, mobility is fine. This seems to be working out alright for us so far. We've got 11 charges. Now, here's the thing. I want to I wanna just go back for a second here. I knew he was being ganked. I told him, you're being ganked. They're going to kill you. I'll show you. I'll show you exactly when I knew. Ready? we got player perspective on, right? So we're up here together, and I go back, and I'm looking over here, right then, right then, I'm pinging, I'm saying, hey dude, you're being ganked, you're being ganked, you're being ganked, because, okay, two heroes that were mid started going top, why would two heroes that are mid start going top? It's because other people are initiating a gank, and the people who are mid want to join. It's just, it was so freaking obvious, it's like, dude, they're, they're going on you. And he didn't listen, so... Hey, at least I got Blink. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Oh, man. And I have exactly 200 HP. This Luna, if she actually had, like, a bit more HP, would be a bit tougher to kill. Oh, this is bad. We just walked right into that. And Techie's committed suicide to kill Silencer. Fortunately, I have Blink, so I'm just going to run away. Radiant structures oh man, we're going to lose our top T1 now, easily. Maybe even T2. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower, Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, it looks like they're not going to push for T2. They're being very cautious. Alright, 500 or so gold away from having our Blink. Sorry, our, our uh, boots of travel. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. Doing a decent enough job keeping wards on cooldown. You can only buy wards every six minutes. Maximum stack is two. Now he did a, a gank on me, but I have blink. I'm a blinker. That's another reason why I didn't buy the blink daggers, because I knew I could steal blink from anti mage if I really needed it. Otherwise, Blink Dagger's a really good pickup on Rubik, because he's all about positioning and, and being able to uh, spell steal exactly the spell that you want when you need it. So you need to be able to get good positioning. I am very, very close to having my boots of travel, but I realized there's going to be a team fight. It's time to go join the team fight. I had also placed an offensive ward on this hill so that we can see in this tree area. We still have Blink. Did I just initiate on that? I think I started that. Yep. So this is the advantage of Blink Telekinesis. We can see the techies up there because of that war that I placed. So we... Blink. Telekinesis. Target him back. He's dead. Easy kill. And somebody... I think it might have been the Luna. No. Medusa put her uh, Mjolnir charge on me. Okay. Still have Blink. I'm liking having Blink, but I think that I might switch to something else here. I would love to pick up an ultimate of some sort. Also, we have the Boots of Travel on the Courier. Nice. I'm gonna put that down there, because that's where that goes. Certain items have to go in certain slots when I play. That's bound to my C key. I always use C for teleportation. It's useful to have keyboard shortcuts, because you can just press CC, and you'll automatically teleport home. Very, very quick. It's much faster than 
pressing C or clicking and then targeting your base or something. Just CC. Initiate, teleport home. Same thing with Blink Dagger. You can double tap Blink Dagger and you'll blink towards your well. Radiance bottom, Radiance bottom tower has fallen. I do not have a stolen spell right now. It actually ran out. I kept Blink for so long. Next item we're going to build is going to be the Scepter. Alright, let's start this fight over at regular speed. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Okay, did you see how fast that Luna died? I mean, holy crap. Look at that. With her 1000 life, she's just, just obliterated. She needed more HP. That was not good. Meanwhile, I stole Omni Slash. <laughs> Rubik the Omni Slasher. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, pick him up. I'll take that. Please. Okay, Ice Path works. Nuke him. Get him. Spell steal. Ooh, it's a gem. I see a gem. I see a gem. Get the gem. Get the gem. That's me pinging, saying, hey, look, a gem. I found pretties on the ground. Oh, it's Rubik. It went all right. If the Luna hadn't died, we'd probably be throning them right now. At least, at least pushing down the entire top lane. But no, Luna has no HP. She's level 16 with 1200 HP. <laughs> wow. Alright, we're well on our way to having our Scepter. So the advantage of Scepter is not only does it reduce the cooldown to 2 seconds, but it also gives you the Scepter upgraded version of any ultimate skill. Oop, found some... found some remotes. Good, Good thing we got that gem. I'm gonna put that ward up there again. They had de-warded me with the gem. It's tough, you know, when they get when they get wards, or when they get a gem. What are we gonna get? Oh, I got Omni Slash! <laughs> Omni Slash! <laughs> oh, I love Omni Slashing P uh, the Juggernaut. Now, the way that spell steel works with um, regard to cooldown is let's say that I spell steal something from Jakiro and I've got a 100 second cooldown on Omni Slash. If I spell steal from Jakiro and then I steal Omni Slash from, from Juggernaut again, I will have no cooldown on the skill. On the other hand, if I spell steal from Juggernaut, cast Omni Slash, and then I spell steal from him again and it's still Omni Slash, then I'll maintain the cooldown. You have to, to cycle something else in between in order to be able to get a refreshed cooldown. So. We've got 100 seconds on this. We might as well steal something else. Ooh, macro fire. <laughs> I love the way that he talks, too. He's like, ooh. Like, he says all kinds of really funny things. Like, that's a new one. Or, <laughs> He's a funny character. I love Rubik. He's a lot of fun. One, uh, one thing that can be really fun to spell steal on Rubik is if you're playing against a Morphling and you actually steal um, his morph skill... You can convert all of your agility into strength and give yourself like 3k HP, which is awesome. Because who needs attack speed on Rubik? He's a nuker. You know, he's got a grand total of 150 attack speed. Getting an extra 40 strength. Again, Luna got blown the hell up because she has no HP. I just stole, stole Spike Carapace. I used it to stun Anti-Mage because he was cleaving. It helped out, I guess, a little bit. It's not exactly the best skill compared to what else is available. Who's blinking in? Probably Juggernaut. Yeah. Lift him up. Oh, he got his ult off. Run away! I'll take that. Throw him back. And he's dead. 22 charges. We have... Infinite mana, basically. <laughs> we really need this scepter. Now that we have so much mana. Now, if we were to die right now, 22 times 4 is 88 seconds. Isn't it? Yeah. So, no matter what, we, we would have an instant respawn time right now. So, I'm playing Rubik pretty well here. This is exactly what you want to do. You want to be close enough to the fight that you're, you're applying your null field aura to your carry, but far enough away that if they commit to you, then they have to fight everyone else. 
So you're present, but you're not really always showing yourself. You're always there, you're ready to respond, ready to reverse team fights. There's a stun there. I should steal his stun, I can stun again. Oh, I got mana burn. Ah. I wanted his stun. Gotta be a little bit quicker, I was a little slow on my pickup. But still, we need just a thousand gold and we'll have our scepter. Let's speed the game up a little bit. No reason to not farm when you've got infinite mana. And we got boots of travel, so I'm gonna teleport in and help help him whenever I can. Might as well be present, right? Now I'd like Blink, please. Blink would be way better than Mana Burn. They don't really have any big int heroes, you know. The Jakiro would be nice to, to Mana Burn, but it's just there's much better spells available for us. I've still got the gem <laughs> that I got from them for some reason. So that really shut down the techies. Okay, hey, 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 look, it's a, it's an anti-mage. Blink is mine. Yay! Where do you think he blinked to? I, I think he blinked up here. Aha, got him! <laughs> oh, I love Blink. Oh, yeah, Prophet. He's just too much fun. 400 gold to go. Blink! Blink! I'm everywhere. I had a feeling there might be a ward up there. With the five second cooldown, might as well go check it out. Now we want to scout for mines before we push up. That's why we got the kept the gem at your site. I'm now seven and four with twenty assists. Can't push up the hill because there's mines. Again, if Luna had more HP, top lane would already be dead. So this game is going way longer than it needs to because Luna is bad. What I get? Oh, it's Omni Slash. Don't quite have a scepter though, so I don't get the sceptered version. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> I'm a juggernaut. <laughs> okay, let's go finish the scepter. Now we have a two, two seconds. Yeah, we've already won. Um, Vince with the pre-GG. That's a very bad manner. You don't GG. If you're winning, you don't GG. You wait till they GG, and then you're allowed to GG back. But you do not pre-GG. It's very, very rude. Again, Luna, suicidally... Suicidally low HP. So I didn't even really get to use the Scepter. Which makes me sad. I'll take your Blink. Blink lift. Throw him back. And he had to use a BKB to get out. Oh well. Useless AM. <laughs> he says thank you. <laughs> uh, he's four and four. He didn't really get to do much. And that's gonna be the end. So we didn't really get to take advantage of the scepter, but Rubik is a very fun hero. I had a lot of fun in this game. It was it was fun. So yeah, cool. Well, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, you know, we can have a little debate on item choice. I do think that the Bloodstone was overkill on Mana Regen, but you know, if the game had gone different, it, it could have really worked out. Could have saved the team with the AoE heal. I don't know. It, it also slowed down the build-up to Scepter, so it's kind of hard to say. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. See you again in the next video. See you soon.